Hello everybody, welcome to this lecture on microcontroller and its application. In today's lecture, we will discuss about PIC timers. Okay, so let's go ahead. Yeah. Now, we have all studied about timers either as individual units or we have studied about timers uh, with reference to 8051 microcontroller. And we have seen that timer is a device which is used to count an event. Now, timer is inbuilt feature in PIC microcontroller. So, you need not have an external uh, device connected to your PIC, but it is internally built in to your PIC microcontroller. And your PIC microcontroller has three timer modules, that is timer 0, timer 1, timer 2. Now, this is specifically with PIC 16C74A. Okay, there's a family of microcontrollers. Not all the microcontrollers will have all the three uh, timers. But some of the microcontrollers may have just one or two timers and some of the microcontrollers may have all the three timers. So as far as our scope of syllabus is concerned, PIC 16C74A has all the three timers, timer 0, timer 1 and timer 2. And it also has an another event counter which is a capture, compare and pulse width modulation module that which is called a CCP. Now there are two CCP modules, CCP1 and CCP2 in uh, PIC microcontrollers. And as you can see, timer 0 is an 8-bit timer Timer 1 is a 16-bit timer and timer 2 is again an 8-bit timer with the compare feature. So, these are the basic, this is the basic overview about timers of PIC microcontroller. So, let's see some uh, in detail. What is timer 0? So, as you can see, timer 0 is an 8-bit timer or a counter. You know, whenever a timer operates to count an internal event or when it counts with reference to its internal clock frequency, it is called to operate as a timer mode of operation. Whenever it counts an externally coming clock frequency or an event, it is called to operate in a counter mode of operation. So that is what is a timer and counter and timer 0 can operate as both as timer and counter. All the timers in, eight zero, in your PIC microcontroller can operate as timer or counter. Timer mode is actually selected by clearing this bit called T0CS or timer 0 clock source select. Same time counter mode is selected by setting this bit. Now, this there is as is always with timers, they need a special purpose register. Or in 8051, when you studied as a special function register, a register which is used to configure your timers. Here, the register that is used to configure your timers is called as option. The register is called as option. Now, there is another option called as prescaler. Prescaler is a is a feature that your microcontroller pick has to control the speed of your timers counting of an event. Now, prescaler is a frequency divider. You can have different prescaler settings such as 1 is to 2 to 1 is to 4 to till 1 is to 256. That means, what do you mean by 1 is to 2 is for every 2 counts, it will, every 2 cycles it will count once or 4 it will actually pull down the speed by 4 times. So, so, prescaler is actually of uh, shared by watchdog timer and timer 0. The prescaler that timer 0 has is actually shared with watchdog timer. So, it's a mutually exclusively used by both these units. So, whenever a watchdog timer is using the prescaler, uh, timer 0 cannot use a prescaler. And to remind you, timer 0 can work without a prescaler. In that case, it will directly be running at the speed of your internal clock frequency divided by 4. Now, timer 0, whenever it overflows, that is whenever it overflows from FF to 00H, it can create an interrupt and that interrupt is called as timer 0 interrupt flag. Now, this flag is set whenever it overflows from FF to 00, that is timer 0 register. And this flag is actually find in INTCON register or interrupt control register. This register has to be cleared of this timer 0 interrupt flag using our software instruction. It does not clear by itself. So that's timer 0 module. This is the option uh, register which is used to configure your timer 0. As you can see, uh, the most important pins are your PS0 to PS2. There is a PS0, PS1 and PS2 pins. Bits, now these bits are used to set the prescalar value. When they are 0, 0, 0, your prescalar value that is selected for timer 0 is 1 is to 2. As you can see over here, this, uh, the prescalar value that is selected for timer 0 is 1 is to 2. Now, whenever the bit value that is, it is 0 and whenever it is 0, 0 and it is 1, then the prescalar value that is set, selected is 1 is to 
4. Now this is how a prescalar value is set. When it is 1, 1, 1, the prescalar value is selected as 1 is to 2, 56. As I said, prescalar is a way of slowing down your timer or controlling your timer's speed of counting. PSA is a bit which is used to assign the prescalar. Whenever a prescalar is set as 1, then the uh, uh, the uh, PSA bit is set as 1, the prescaler is assigned to watch the timer. And when it is uh, cleared, the prescaler is assigned to timer 0. So, if you have to use the timer 0 with prescaler value, with prescaler, then always make sure it is cleared. PSA bit is cleared. Then only you can use the timer 0. Now, timer 0 source I select that uh, actually determines whether you want to count on high to low transition or low to high transition. Now, whenever it is set, it counts from high to low and when it is reset or when it is cleared, it counts from low to high transition. Now, this is clock source select. Whenever uh, timer 0 clock source select, as I said, whenever it is set, it counts with internal clock frequency. That is, it counts as a, it acts as a timer and when it is cleared, it, it uh, acts as a counter. Other two things are not very important, but these bits are very important um, as far as your timer 0 configuration is uh, uh, considered okay so this is a basic block diagram of your timer as you can see your timer always acquires a clock frequency your internal oscillator frequency or clock frequency divided by 4 so the, if the frequency of your clock or f oscillator is 20 then then the frequency that your uh, 20 megahertz if the frequency that your internal clock frequency is operating at is 20 megahertz, then the F oscillator divided by 4, that is the clock frequency that your timer mode receives, will be equal to 5 megahertz. So, that is one important thing to be kept in mind, especially when we have to count or when you have to calculate the event generation happening. So, uh, as you can see in the block, the timer clock input is given your timer 0 module and you can decide whether whether your timer has to act as a timer or a counter by setting the bit for timer 0 clock select bit clock source select bit now you can select you can decide whether you want to use the prescaler option if the prescaler is used very well it will count at lower speed that you set the value in ps0 to ps2 bit Otherwise, the speed that will be used will be 5 megahertz frequency. Now, after the piece scalar out, you actually sync with internal clockwise. Now, this requires two cycle delay, which is very minuscule because you are counting at a speed of 5 megahertz. One divided by 5 megahertz, you can dis you can know it will be around 20 millisecond uh, delay, 20 microsecond in fact, and that is very minimal. So, but anyway, to sync with the internal clocks, uh, clocks, it requires two cycle delay. And then the timer counts for every single event, every single cycle the timer counts or for every four cycles or every eight cycles as per the prescalar value the timer starts counting. Whenever the timer starts counting, whenever it goes to the maximum value of its count because it is an 8-bit register, it can count up to FF. Whenever it counts up to FF, uh, it will roll back to 00, 0 and whenever it rolls from 0, FF to 00, 0, it will always set a flag called timer 0 interrupt flag. Okay. So, timer 0 interrupt flag is set at the end of uh, whenever your timer 0 register overflows from FF to 00. zero. And um, this is the basic operation of timer 0 module. Now, this uh, below is given uh, the timing or each instruction, how it gets executed in a time frame uh, of your uh, big microcontroller fine now timer 1 module coming to the next timer that is timer 1 module timer 1 module is a 16 bit timer now a 16 bit timer it is actually divided into two register two 8 bit register timer 1 high and timer 1 low together they are called as timer 1 register which is 16 bit register now timer 1 register pair can count from anywhere from 00h to ffh and whenever it overflows from FFH to 00H, it generates an interrupt flag, which is called as timer 1 interrupt flag. Yes. And as any other interrupt flag, it also has to be cleared by your software instruction. Now, timer 1 can be configured using your timer 1 control register, or otherwise it is called as T1 con. 
register timer 1 control register now in this register unless and otherwise you set timer 1 on bit as set otherwise your timer 1 will not run okay so let's see what is timer 1 control is so as you can see your timer 1 control register it starts with timer 1 on bit only when you set as 1 your timer 1 starts running otherwise timer 1 is off this is made uh, possible so that your timer will not run and consume unnecessary uh, energy so timer one clock source select which decides whether your timer is acting uh, as a timer or a counter so whenever it is set uh, whenever it is reset in fact it will get the internal clock as your input acting as a timer and whenever it is reset or when it is set that is one it will act as a counter now then you have a timer one sync bit now there are two modes of operation as i said your timer one can operate either as a timer or it can operate as a counter it can act as a timer or a counter based upon what is set in timer one clock source select bit now whenever it acts as a timer mode of operation it counts your internal clock pulse whenever it acts as an external count uh, whenever it acts as a device which counts your external events it acts as a counter now that is the time you can actually sync your internal clock pulse with your external of coming frequency now your internal clock and your external clock whenever it is in sync it is said to be operational in synchronized time counter mode whenever it is operating with your internal clock pulse and your external clock pulse not in sync then it is called as to be operating in a synchronous counter mode of operation so your timer can basically operate in timer modes or synchronized counter mode or a synchronous counter mode the difference in synchronous counter mode and asynchronous counter mode is in synchronous counter mode it syncs your internal clock pulse with external clock pulse in a synchronous counter mode the internal and external clock pulse is not in sync the difference in operation here is that the synchronous counter mode of operation will of course uh, provide you a counter mode of operation to uh, count your externally coming clock pulse but asynchronous counter mode can actually give you option, options of keeping your timer running even when it is uh, when the microcontroller is not operational because it is not dependable upon your internal clock pulse at all so this kind of timer operation can be actually used to create real-time clock as you can see in your cpu for example even when your cpu is shut down that clock is still running you need not reset the clock when you start your cpu right so to bring in a real-time clock or a clock which will keep running even when your timer is in sleep mode you need this kind of operation so timer one sync bit actually when it is set or when it is reset it selects these two modes so timer one sync bit is used for that and um, uh, timer one oscillator enable control bit is actually used to uh, enable your oscillator or shut down your oscillator uh, the other value that is timer one uh, ps uh, clock uh, prescale select bits that is t1 ck ps1 and t1 ckps0 when it is set when both the bits are set your timer works with a prescale value 1 is 2 8 now remember here there are only four prescale values possible that is 1 is 2 1 1 is 2 2 1 is 2 4 or 1 is 2 8 it does not have an exhaustive list of prescale value from 1 is 2 2 to 1 is 2 56 as you saw in timer 0 so so it can actually have four different speed configurations timer one can have four different speed configuration it is all decided by what bit you write in t1 ck ps0 and t1 ck ps1 bit so i believe the configuration register for timer 1 is clear to all of you now timer 1 has a very clear block diagram over here if you see your timer 1 receives your internal or external clock inputs at this place and then it is um, if it is getting an internal clock pulse it is divided by 4 and then it is decided whether it should act as a timer or counter by timer one clock source select bit and after it is decided whether it has to act as a timer or counter you can set the prescale value now you have four 
options of prescale value after that is done you can decide whether it should get synchronized especially when it is operating as a counter you can decide whether the internal and external clock frequency should be synchronized or not if it has to be synchronized then it is said to be working in synchronized counter mode if it is not synchronized then it is said to be in asynchronous counter mode and as we said it is decided by timer one sync bit whenever it is uh, zero you uh, it is in synchronous counter mode operation when it is one it is an asynchronous counter mode operation so uh, further on timer one on bit unless and otherwise this bit is set your timer is not operational when all this configuration is done your timer register timer one high and timer one low starts counting they start counting from a value of zero 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 to ffh zero 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 to ffh and whenever it overflows from zero 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 to ffh whenever it overflows from its maximum value to its minimum value i'm sorry for this writing but whenever it overflows from ffh ffh to zero 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 timer one interval flag is set so this is basically the timer one operation let's move on to timer two module as you can see in your timer two module it is an eight bit timer and it is configured by a register called timer two control register now this timer is little different than the other two timers because it does not overflow from its maximum value by the way it completely pairs its timer register value continuously with a register called as PR2. It continuously compares its maximum value with a register called as PR2. Now whenever the match happens, that is whenever this timer 2 register matches the value in PR2 register, it creates an interrupt. It creates an interrupt. So it, it, it starts incrementing from 0, 0 but it increments up to the value that is there in PR2 register and when it matches that value it creates an interrupt and then again it, overflow, it overflows to 0, 0, H. So it has a prescaler as well as a postscaler. Its prescale options are 1 is 2, 1, 1 is 2, 4 and 1 is 2, 16 only. Only these three prescale values are possible and its postscalar value ranges from 1 is 2, 1, 2, 1 is 2, 16. Now I will tell you the implications of both as you can see in the model over here your timer to register is given an input from internal clock or an external clock uh, as well as and when it is operating as a timer or a counter and your timer to register value is written with a value that is your 00, 0, 01, 0, 02 as the time goes on or as, as per your prescale value. Now comparator compares the value in the PR2 register. Now we have to write the value into PR2 register. Uh, it will keep on comparing the value between timer 2 register and PR2 register. Whenever the timer 2 increments and matches the value that is there in PR2 register, it resets or it creates an interrupt. Now, when equal value is coming, it creates an interrupt. Now, that interrupt can again be post scaled. That means for every one interrupt, you can create an interrupt flag, or for every 16 interrupt, also you can create one interrupt flag. Now it depends upon the post scalar value. Now it depends. Now the post scalar value range from 1 is to 1, 1 is to 2, 1 is to 3, up to 1 is to 16. So whether you for every two interrupts you want to create you want to set an interrupt flag, or when uh, for every three interrupts you want to set an interrupt flag, for or for every interrupt you want to set an interrupt flag, it's all up to the programmer. That's why you have a post scalar value. Now this is the configuration register as you can see, bit 0 and bit 1 is used to uh, uh, set the prescaler value. Uh, there are three uh, values possible. That is one is to four, one is one is to one, one is to four, and one is to sixteen. Now, apart from this, timer two is on only if timer two on a bit is set as one. And the postscalar option, the, of course, as I said, there is uh, zero, 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 zero. That is these four bits. Uh, timer zero, postscalar three, two, one, zero bit. These four bits are responsible for post scale value 1 is to 1, 1 is to 2 to 1 is to 16. So this is timer 2 con control register. Now coming to CCP module. CCP module, as I said, is capture, compare or pulse width modulation module. Now the timer unit in PIC microcontrollers were designed very efficiently to meet the industry standards for application building. That's why they given you a lot of flexibility 
in uh, uh, timers. Now, as you can see, capture compare or pulse width modulation. There are two modules that is CCP1 and CCP2 in peak microcontrollers. Now, CCP1 module and CCP2 module are same as far as the uh, configuration and register format is concerned, except for one difference is their ex special event trigger. Now, special event trigger in CCP1 module triggers one operation as well as special event trigger in CCP2 module can trigger on another operation such as ADC. Now, this depends from microcontroller to microcontroller, that is from pick which family of microcontroller you choose. Now, CCP modes use timer as their resources. Now, timer 1 is used for capture and compare and pulse width modulation use timer 2 resources. So, let's see in detail what is each of this mode. Now, now to either configure them in capture mode or compare mode or pulse width modulation mode, the bits, the first four bits of your CCP1 control register is used. So, whenever these first four bits are 0, 0, 0, 0, then it is set as a capture compare pulse width modulation off, means it is all off. Whenever it is set as 0, 0, 0, 1, then it is in capture mode and for every falling edge, it will capture the value that is there in timer. Similarly, when it is set as 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 and 0, then it is set as in a compare mode uh, where uh, it will check for a match in every single event. So, uh, similarly when it is, when this first two bits are 1 and other two bits it does not matter, that is why it is called as don't, uh, don't care bits, then it is called to be operating in pulse width modulation mode. Okay. The other mm -hmm. Uh, other two bits that is CCP uh, uh, are actually a CCP XY and XX that is your the most significant bits are actually used with respect to your pulse width modulations uh, duty cycle. We will come to it later on. Now, capture mode. And in the capture mode, as you can see, uh, there are two registers in the, in the uh, block diagram. As you can see, there are two registers, two 16 bit registers that is your capture compare one high and capture compare pulse width modulation 1 low. So, CCPR1 high and CCPR1 low is actually divided uh, division of the 16 bit register. Now, this is your timer 1 high and timer 1 low. Now, the timer starts counting from 0000, 0, 0, 0 to FFFH. Now, you can capture the value that is there in timer depending up either in for every falling edge for or every rising edge or for every fourth rising edge or for every 16 rising edge. Now, this is decided by the prescale option that you choose. <clears throat> so, uh, timer 1 should be running in either the timer mode or in synchronous counter mode. As you know, there is also one more mode possible in timer 1 that is asynchronous counter mode. But if you use that mode, the capture mode cannot be used. Whenever the um, capture mode uh, sees an event, it actually sets a flag called as capture uh, CCP1 interrupt flag. Now, this is, uh, this interrupt is generated only when CCP interrupt enable bit is set. Okay. So, as you can see, there is a prescaler value which can be used to divide it, uh, which can be used to select whether it should uh, capture for every falling edge or rising edge or fourth rising edge or sixteenth rising edge. And there is an edge detect section. Once the edge detection is done, then the capture and capture mode works. And for every rising edge or every falling edge or fourth rising edge, the value from the timer is captured into the capture CCPR1 register file. And at the same time, and when the event is generated, CCP intro uh, one interrupt flag is set. So that was about capture mode. Now let's see about compare mode. In compare mode, um, it constantly compares with the timer 1 register pair, where it used to capture, here it compares. Now, CCPR1, as you can see here, it constantly compares its value with the timer 1 register value. And whenever there is a match happens, thanks to the comparator over here, the output can be either driven low 
or can be driven high sorry driven high or driven low or it can remain unchanged it depends upon the configuration that you do uh, in, in your in your ccp1 configuration register timer 1 must be running in timer mode or synchronous mode as it uh, see as compare mode also uses your timer mode of uh, timer 1 as your resources so that is what is compare mode in pulse width modulation mode as you can see uh, your pulse width modulation or a simple exam metaphor for pulse width is your square wave but not exactly as a metaphor because of pulse width modulation you can keep uh, on signal or an on time for a specific amount of time and off time can be small and then uh, specific on time and off time so this can keep on going and this is useful this resource is useful for operation of especially motors now to set up a pulse width modulation operation you have to set the PR2 register value now this is very much in context to setting the duty cycle for pulse width modulation once you do that the pulse width modulation duty cycle can be set by writing a value into ccpr1 low register that is found in ccp1 control uh, C, uh, ccp1 low register and ccp1 control register fifth and fourth bit now the pulse width modulation actually is a 10 bit resolution output that it can give so you need 10 bits so ccp1 pin uh, since it it has to act as an output pin the tri state buffer has to be cleared now after that you have to set the timer to prescale value now if you remember pulse width modulation uses a timer 2 as a resource so you have to uh, use uh, you have to set the timer to working you have to set the timer to working and you have to set the prescale value for the timer 2 then you can configure your ccp module to work in pulse width modulation mode how do you do it you write in the configuration mode all once or the first four bits or the second uh, or and third and fourth bit you actually have to write as one and one to configure it as to work in pulse width modulation mode so that is what pwm mode so let's see some formula these are some formulas which is used to find out the pulse width modulation period and the pulse width modulation duty cycle and maximum pulse width modulation resolution now, as you can see to find out what is the optimum pulse width modulation period you should know the value that you should put in the PR2 register of your timer 2 and then timer of timing and of oscillator of course uh, if your oscillator frequency is 20 megahertz timing of an oscillator will be 1 divided by 20 megahertz and uh, uh, if your um, timer 2 prescale value is 4 then you, you should write it as 4 or 16 you should write it as 16 so 1 and 1 so that is what is timer to prescale value similarly you have maximum pulse width modulation resolution for a given frequency pulse width modulation frequency that is maximum pwm resolution is locked to the base f oscillator divided by f uh, that is f is the frequency of an oscillator and frequency of pulse width modulation divided by log of 2 which will give you the maximum pulse width modulation now these all these uh, uh, formulas are also very important from exam point of view so this is all about timers so as you can rewind your timers in pick are very flexible they give you three timers that is timer 0 which is an 8 bit timer timer 1 which is a 16 bit timer and timer 2 which is again an 8 bit timer now um, all these three timers can be configured with the respective control registers timer 0 uses option as a register timer 1 uses t1 control register timer 2 uses timer 2 control register now timer 1 can act as also in timer 1 uh, timer mode or also as synchronous timer mode or a synchronous counter mode now synchronous counter mode and asynchronous counter mode i gave you already the difference so keep in mind all this minor differences between these timer modules and remember also that it it houses a ccp module that is capture compare and pulse width modulation module which is useful for making of many applications so that's about pick timers uh, please comment in the video if you like this video thank you